How's it going, folks? Or, or rather, howdy, folks. <laughs> I don't know how that's become like a trademark opener. But uh, yes, I guess you can guess it by just this, that I'm in the saga. So yeah, Andy, you were you were wondering about when I was going to update about the saga. Well, here she is, running fine. One of those cars that I can just leave for a long time and then just get into it and drive. And uh, to prove that, I'm actually going to probably drive this to the East Coast or something one of these days. Oh, bad road. But you know what? 13 inch rims with huge aspect ratio tires. No problem at all. Car shifts beautifully, drives beautifully. Aircon is cold, typical Proton Aircon. Thank you, Kelvin, for sorting that out. And thank you, Kenzone, for sorting out this car so well. Like I said, once a car is properly sorted, you can just enjoy it. And it's going to serve you for a really, really long time. The sad thing about this car, the thing I don't like, is the fact that I don't get to drive it as much as I would love to. Because, yeah, you know, Weevil Garage is, is, is big. Really, really big. But this car just runs so well and still gets a lot of attention. Uh, especially among the older folk who know, you know, this car came from 1985 when Proton was still a, a, a new company. 1985! 1985! Till now, some of you watching this weren't even born yet. But uh, yes, this car is running so well. And the topic for today is mobile podcast. Yes, I'm calling it a mobile podcast because instead of sitting in a studio with microphones all around me and headphones on, I drive and I talk to you about the, about the, the car industry and also the other aspects of the car industry uh, insofar as owning old school classics are concerned. Now, today's topic is the difference between restoration and resto mod. Yeah, resto mod. Mod, of course, stands for modification. And uh, restoration, yes, of course, you know what restoration is. But a resto mod is when you restore a car and actually add in more, um, how, how, how should I say it, uh, more modern, more modern stuff into a car whereby it uh, becomes better. Now, okay, two schools of thought. Again, when it comes to resto mods, yeah, um, classic car enthusiasts, I mean, real hardcore classic car enthusiasts. And there goes my... <laughs> there goes my my GoPro. Sorry about that, but uh, here it is again. So you see, no cuts. So hopefully it uh, it's still okay. Okay, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, hardcore classic car enthusiasts will not uh, take kindly to a resto mod, and that's because they want to keep their car as original as possible. Especially if they're entering it into car shows and uh, stuff like that, you know, uh, classic car shows, uh, what else, um, Retro Havocs. Now, uh, Retro Havoc is a very cool local classic car show that happens on the East Coast sometimes. Uh, I've attended one, but never with one of my cars, so I'm planning to do that sometime. So anyway, they enter their cars into classic car shows and points, points are awarded for originality. Now, these cars, some of them, um, are what we like to call, uh, well not like to call, but uh, it's not really a nice thing to say about a classic car but the term is trailer queen. Now trailer queen means you tow, you flatbed your classic car to a show, um, put it down and then let it be judged and let it be seen and uh, ogled and drooled over and then when the show is over and if you won or you haven't, you probably get a cert if you haven't won first, second or third, you put it back, you load it back onto a flatbed and take it back, take it home or take it to where it's, it's normally housed, usually in a nice aircon uh, showroom somewhere, yeah? So those are trailer queens. I've never had a trailer queen. Every single car that I've owned that's worthy of entering a classic car show, uh, the Alfetta, for example, at Alpha Bangsa the other day, was driven. It has always been driven to the show and driven back. And uh, points are awarded for originality, definitely. So if a classic car is very, very original, uh, it gets more points than a car that has uh, maybe signal lights from a Proton Iswara or something like that. Okay, now that's that's a classic restoration, yeah, where you want to go as original as possible. However, however, a resto mod is also still not wrong, especially for our climate. I'll give you an example. Some classic cars or vintage cars or even old school classics uh, came to this country without being homologated, without being tropicalized. Malaysia gets rain and heat and humidity unlike almost any other country in the world, yeah? It's really, really bad. So, cooling, for one thing, okay? Uh, a car that has been brought here from a European country, from a colder climate, 
probably does not have an adequate radiator fan it's probably got something like this because they don't need that much cooling over there because the atmosphere the ambience uh, is already cool the climate is already cool here it's not so if you're stuck in a traffic jam in a non-homologated or tropicalized car your car can overheat because it just does not have the amount of cooling power needed to cool down the engine don't forget yeah there's a fire going on in that bonnet up front yeah there's a fire going on constantly under the bonnet inside the engine combustion it's fire so if you don't have appropriate cooling you're gonna have big problems so a resto mod when you're restoring a classic car or a vintage car or a or an old school classic from another country that has not had the kind of uh, does not have the kind of heat and humidity that we have here you might want to consider putting a bigger fan because it's like it's a no-brainer bigger fan more wind remember those big ass fans that the that the are here actually at the paddock um a lot more cooling so that's what you need for your car uh, that's just one aspect yeah another thing is um in, in so far as resto mods are concerned are the electrics now all cars used filament bulbs you remember those um the bulb with the with the filament inside yeah that's what they call filament bulbs but today we are lucky enough to have stuff like leds now leds consume less power they are brighter they last longer i think but definitely they are brighter and they use less power so if you want to put in leds into your interior light to replace uh, filament bulbs or even in the headlights by all means go ahead if you're not entering the car into a classic car show where points are going to be deducted for that why suffer yeah air conditioning okay as you know protons air conditioning is always is, is really really good but some cars that come from overseas uh, even have heaters right so one way is cool the other way is heat we don't need heat we really really don't need heaters so many people have actually cut off that part and just stuck to, to cooling maybe the blower is not good enough i remember my um my uh, e36 318i uh manual the it was fully imported the blower was terrible even on max it was so slow because it came from a country where you don't need that much cooling here we need a tornado inside our air conditioning just to be able to survive see i've turned my air conditioning down now the blower to 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 low on the on the proton and I'm already starting to sweat because it's just not good enough. So even on high, this is maxed, yeah? I think I need another speed. I really do. So that is a resto mod. If I were to do that, it's a resto mod. Another thing, the player. This car probably came with a cassette player. In fact, I'm pretty sure this car came with a cassette player. You can't even buy cassettes anymore. So why keep a cassette player? I've changed this to a single loading CD with USB with my 80 songs so these are all what you call resto mods and there's a lot of resto mods that you can do actually uh for for your car not not just in terms of the cooling and the, uh, the air conditioning and stuff like that so many things so by all means do it don't listen to public opinion saying no you got to keep the car as original as possible and then what suffer suffer like hell this car i fit in uh gap springs People will say, whoa, you put in gap springs into an original saga. Oh, yo, where can? Hello. First of all, it's my car. I'll do whatever the hell I want. Second of all, it has actually made the ride a bit stiffer, slightly stiffer, not uncomfortable, just slightly stiffer because this car had um, original springs with a lot of uh, metal fatigue in it and it was wallowing a lot in corners. Now, that's a safety thing. So now it tracks around corners much better. That's a resto mod brakes cars from the 60s and 70s don't even talk about abs don't even talk about ebd uh, brake assist okay don't talk about any of that it's a it's a disc with a caliper for the front and a drum at the back okay if you want to improve your brakes that's a great thing to do are two things i've always said yeah two things don't play the fool don't joke tires brakes this is your life we are talking about don't skip so if it comes to a point where you have a chance to actually upgrade the braking system on your car do it do it because and if you have to do it do it yeah do it okay <laughs> sorry okay i'm rambling so i've stopped here and uh since i'm already stopped i'm gonna show, show you the outside of the saga nothing much has changed except um i'll, sh I'll show you what i mean okay Oh, uh, see, because it fell on just now, I jammed it really tight. And now I, I can't get it. 
Okay, here we go. So, hello Saga. I'm gonna make this quick because it is frightfully hot outside. I mean, frightfully, frightfully hot outside. But uh, other, other than the, um, yeah, so this, I don't know if you can consider this a resto mod, it's got Proton on it. But yeah, this of course was not original, it didn't come with the car, as you know, I got this done postpartum. <laughs> Post purchase, so yeah, here we go. Oh, it's so nice and cool outside. <laughs> this usually, I think this guy had wind ups because that's where the winder used to go, but now it's got power windows. So I'm outside and all alone, and there's the saga. So, this is what I mean. I'm so sad about this, but as you know, this was one of the things I changed when I got the car, but it's it was new and now it's all faded again. So, it looks like I gotta go get another one. But there she is, folks. The Saga is running so beautifully. It's one of those get up and go cars. PPG, I like to say. Put petrol and go. Don't worry about it. Yes. As you know, just a recap, I drove all the way to Kedah, Sungai Petani Kedah, to pick up this car and then drive back. Day trip. What a crazy day trip that was. Thank you, Chiang, for following me. But uh, there she is, folks. There's me Saga. Ah, so lovely. Such a lovely, lovely car to drive. Don't forget, yeah, this car predates the internet. This car predates mobile phones, pretty much. Came from a time when it was just... It's, a, it's, a, it's an analog car in a digital world. Hello, bus. It's an analog car in a digital world. I bought that just from Shopee, just to protect the dashboard. From heat, crazy, crazy heat. Unbelievable kind of heat. But other than that, yes, I do have LEDs in here because the filament bulbs, I mean old car, so the filament bulbs were pretty horrible and I've got so much better visibility at night now. Much, much, much better. There it is. The gap springs also drop the ride height a little bit. So it, uh, I mean, it's not a low rider. Still got a lot of panel gap. Not panel gap, sorry. Wheel arch gap. As you can see, lots. And uh, this was this was self done because it looked unfinished. The bumper looked unfinished. So I put I put I got Procas to do this for me. Thank you, Procas. Both sides, of course. And that was from Shopee as well. <laughs> Shopee is a dangerous place. But everything works, running beautifully. Very, very happy with this car. I got to take it on a long distance drive. Maybe I'll take it back up north, back up to to uh, Sungai Petani for a for a shakedown. Well, not really shakedown because the shakedown drive happened the day I got the car, Sungai Petani and back without doing anything, without the new tires, without the servicing, without doing anything to the uh, to back to KL. Yeah. Oh, one more resto mod on this car. It's got power steering. This car never had power steering but I managed to get Kenzo to fit in a power steering unit. I bought the whole assembly from Atip at Star Plus Tech and uh, Kenzo fitted it for me and so now I can turn the steering wheel with one hand even at standstill, which is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Anyway, that's it. Thank you for joining me. Just a very, very quick update on the saga of the saga. She's still running so beautifully. So if anyone is interested, let me know, drop me an email at chris at evomalaysia.com She's a buy and drive and she's beautiful You can go to any retro havoc or classic car show and it'll stand out Really, I say that hand on heart, not bragging, just fact Take care you all, thanks for watching, bye